1985 that fighting couple Dempsey and Makepeace first scoured the streets of London looking for criminals in front of 20 million viewers. Uh, almost 40 years later, and Glynis Barber has found herself on the other side of the law now, playing Hollyoaks gangster Norma. So here to talk health, happiness and Hollyoaks, of course, please welcome Glynis Barber. <laughs> How are you? Uh, yeah, not bad, thanks. How are you? Good. We're good. How are you feeling about Hollyoaks, you know, coming to an end now? Because you've got two and a half years? I yes, think. nearly two and a half years. I, you know, I have mixed feelings because um, it was such fun. I loved playing a gangster. Yeah. I mean, more than I probably should have. <laughs> I, I, I just... Loved people being frightened of me, especially <laughs> men. But it was, it good, was great. It was good to have a female gangster, female boss. Yeah, but I don't woman. like the way some of it were calling it gangster granny. Yeah, no, That's I know annoying. that. annoying. They never do that with a man, like gangster granddad. Yeah, you, you've never heard gangster no. granddad, have you? Mm. No, no, she, because she literally went in as a crime boss and a very, very scary one who was known as The Undertaker. And, um, and actually, huge kudos um, to Hollyoaks because, um, you know, it's a kind of part that they, they could have cast a man and mm -hmm. I think originally they were going to and they went, no, hold on a minute. You know, a mature woman, mm -hmm. let's make it a woman. And uh, so I went in as this, this very fearsome crime boss and it was, it was such fun to play. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I arrived in my car, which happened to be a hearse, <laughs> because she was the undertaker. <laughs> and... Um, and, and there'd, there'd been a build-up because they'd been talking about the character for months and everyone was talking about The Undertaker, The Undertaker, and they were all terrified. <laughs> and the, the car pulls up and the door opens and out steps a heel. And they were not expecting yeah. it, you know, they were expecting a man yeah. to walk out of the car. So it was, yeah, it was, it was a really great, great part to play. And to play a baddie. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, you know, it softened as time went on because then it turns out that she was the mother of Warren Fox, so, you know, they tried to forge a relationship, although she had dumped him in a home when he was a toddler, <laughs> so, you know, it took him a while to get over that. Mm -hmm. But um, and eventually you allowed, he did. Were you allowed much kind of say or influence of how you played her? Who, did she um, have a, a backstory for you? Did you like her? Yeah, they, yes, you know, you, you, we, we sort of did a workshop to begin with where we sort of thrashed some things out. And um, I didn't want to play her as a psychopath. So I said to them, I see her as a businesswoman. So she's not killing for pleasure. Mm. I mean, she usually gets someone to do it for her anyway. <laughs> but she does do a lot of threatening. Um, and, and she's a businesswoman in a very, very tough world. And to survive in that world as a woman, um, she has to be tougher than the men, you know, and we, we all know mm. that's true. Mm. So, um, yes, I, I, I wanted to play it very much, um, you know, sharp suit, businesswoman, this is, happens to be what she does. Mm. So, so that's sort of the angle I went for. Well, you can see it tonight, Thursday at night. No, not tonight, sorry. Thursday night at 7pm on E4. And then it's Monday. Next Monday is your final episode, I, I believe. Is it? I don't know. I thought it was Thursday. Yeah. But I, I could Well, my totally esteemed be wrong. producer, Matty, tells me <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Yeah. Oh. Um, let's talk about um, health and menopause and all those things because you look amazing and we say it every Thank time you, you come on here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And also, when, when you did Dempsey and Makepeace, we all wanted your hair. I absolutely wanted mm -hmm. your hair. And you still look amazing. And I know that you are very involved in health and well-being and you have your own website to dedicate and Yes, to I'm, I'm very passionate. I became, for years, I've been passionate about health. Um, I don't know why, it sort of randomly happened to me, sort of probably in my late 20s, because I had no interest before. And I just became more and more interested. And, uh, you know, I started eating organically, I started changing the way I ate, I started to exercise, I put shoes on and went running. And, I mean, I really don't know what came over me, but I just suddenly developed this passion and I sort of got into supplements. And, and then a few years later, I thought, well, you know, I'm eating organically, why am I putting all these chemicals and toxins on my face. So I started looking for sort of organic things to put on my face. And this went on for years. I mean, people literally laughed at me. And, um, and then when I went on um, 
well, X, as it's now called, um, people kept asking me questions. I think I was maybe in EastEnders at the time, and people kept saying, you know, well, you know, what do you do? What, do you, what are you wearing? What do you do this? What products do you use? You know, what do you eat? And I was inundated by people asking questions. So I sort of facetiously said one day, you know, maybe I need to start a website. And everyone went, yes, yes, yes. So, um, I mean, it was not my intention. So I started um, Ageless by Glynis Barber, which has now been going, you know, for over 10 years. And, um, and then in the pandemic, I extended it to a YouTube channel because I thought, you know, there's so much to say here. And I, you know, I, I'll talk to um, someone about makeup. I'll talk to someone about beauty products, and then I'll talk to a cardiologist mm. about cholesterol. And so I'm, I'm very, very it's into like, it's health. Like women sharing tips. Oh yeah. Do, what, what, yeah. I, what fascinates me is that you, <coughs> there are one or two <coughs> things that you've always done. You said you ran, and I know that you used to go to the gym a lot. But then after COVID, you changed. You have meditated. That's really impressive. Yes. <laughs> every day. Well, no, 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 not every day. How often do you meditate? Then? Well, I, I, I meditate when I feel I need to. I mean, I did yeah. go through a phase many years ago where I was really into meditation. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm like everyone else. I'm full of good intentions. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I do the best I can. And I try not to give myself a hard time. No, you are. that's with your husband, Michael. So he meditates yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. We did. Um, I, I it's wrote not him supposed in. to be competitive, is it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, no I, wrote, I wrote him in to do a video with me because a lot of what I talk about on the website is stress management because I think we all have to look to our stress management. I think the world has got more and more stressful. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing will age you more than stress. <laughs> I can tell you that for lots of reasons. And um, and I developed, a, a few years ago, I developed quite a bit of anxiety. So I was really sort of trying to tackle that. So it's something I talk about a lot on Ageless. So Michael, unbeknownst to a lot of people, is actually a trained meditation teacher. Is he? Yeah, he's taught meditation in prisons in America and here um, in the Priory. All kinds of places. So he, he really is a very good meditation teacher. So I said to him, come on, you know, let, let's do a, a few videos, uh, meditation videos, and, and people love them. I keep saying, can we do another one? He goes, not now. Mm. I don't <laughs> think Colleen will be watching for the meditating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I'd argue with that, but she's so right. <laughs> Maybe we need to get maybe we need to get Michael on here to do a bit of meditation yes, with I our panel. Did. I think we could do with it sometimes. Along with George. Well, listen, we, we're sorry that we are sorry that you're leaving Hollyoaks, but we look forward to seeing um, Norma's final days and what she gets up to. I said, and that is Thursday night, seven o'clock on E4. Glynis Barber, everybody. <laughs>